This is uh, Jim Fetzer, your host on The Real Deal, with my very special guest today, Greg Hallett, who is a leading revisionist historian. I must say he's published fascinating books on Hitler, on Stalin, and on crime and corruption in New Zealand. His life has been one of high risk, a high wire act, very risky all the way. Multiple attempts on his life have been made, and I'm finding him a fascinating guy. Greg, let's return to the uh, the death of uh, Michael King and tell us a bit about the motivation you abir- uh, believe entered into this killing. Yeah, um, so uh, Sean and I um, uh, offered to do the hit on the 13th of October 2003, and then Helen Clark ran through the Supreme Court Act in two days uh, on the 15th of October 2003, and the Supreme Court officially formed on the 1st of January 2004, and first sat on the 1st of July 2004, six months later. Smack bang in the middle of the uh, Supreme Court forming and sitting was the murder of Michael King, who was, in New Zealand terms, history's king. So what the Supreme Court did, like uh, most of the Supreme Courts in New Zealand do, is they're based around a death, like we used to have hangings under the courts. So there would be a death there. So it was, it was a cult organisation. And um, right in the middle of the Supreme Court um, forming and sitting for the first time was the hit on Michael King, who was killed at Heaven's Rest by Massad. Yes. They, by they, they, justice. Now, what that means is that, that Sean Elias is completely and utterly, totally controlled by Massad, and all of the Supreme Court decisions are actually made in Israel. Yeah. Heaven's rest being picked as symbolically as a place of uh, where the deceased reside. Absolutely. Yeah. And also the death of history, etc. So um, and six weeks, uh, six weeks prior, um, a relative of his was killed, um, Sir, uh, Sir Peter Alworthy. He died on the 13th of January 2004. Then Michael King was the 29th of March 2004, and then the Mossad were doing a hit on me from uh, the um, um, 14th, uh, 14th to the 22nd of May 2004. So it was all these in these like six weeks intervals, six week two month intervals, and that was uh, 22nd of May 2004 was when the um, Israeli tank commander was doing reconnaissance in front of the house. And then other key figures died shortly after, um, Augie Aula and um, the Green MP Rod Donald, who wanted a cabinet position, but he would have been the only heterosexual male with a cabinet position in Helen Clark's government. And then once Helen Clark had proved that she could actually murder one of her close friends, she was uh, promoted to the United Nations uh, and is now the leader of the New World Army. Now, the, the uh, Rothschilds heavily follow reincarnation. And the, the Rothschilds consider Helen Clark to be the Hitler of the South Pacific. Um, and the occult inner circle of the Rothschilds consider Helen Clark to be the reincarnation of Adolf Hitler. <clears throat> as do the CIA. Helen Clark is the reincarnation of Adolf Hitler. Yeah. And so um, Ian Fleming got Adolf Hitler out of Berlin on the 2nd of May, 1945. So we'll talk about Hitler's escape for a bit. This is in Hitler was a British agent. Um, Hitler escaped from the bunkers um, on the 30th of April, uh, came out through the tunnels onto the River Spree, got into a WK-202 submarine, which is a half-size submarine, 36.5 metres long. Um, it was painted in triple grey. And they were lit uh, by the flares of the fighting, which started at 5 to midnight on that night. And um, they were also covered by um, a whole lot of bodies from the Red Cross Hospital, which was in the tunnel, which had been flooded the day before. So the bodies were released out, uh, and then the submarine travelled under the bodies, and it was all lit by flares from both sides so that the submarine didn't need any lights. And they hid in Lake Hubble, for um, a day and a half, and then uh, 4 p.m. on the 2nd of May, um, uh, Hannah Reich flew down in Junkers JU-52 3M-14GE, 
which is a modified hot rod plane covered in corrugated iron that had all the latest gadgets, including a typewriter. Um, and then they flew from Lake Havel about 15 minutes east, directly east to Lake Mugglesea, um, where they met by a launch uh, driven by um, Ian Fleming and Carolyn Saunders, who were in Russian officers' uniforms. And they uh, traded parcels of uh, information, codes, and Swiss bank account codes. And then uh, Hitler and Eva Braun got on the launch, and uh, the launch was beached. Ian Fleming put a, a, a time bomb, five, ten minute time bomb on the, on the launch. And then they got into a Westland Lysander 3A, flown by Hugh Verity, uh, serial number V9367, and flew to Barcelona, where they were met by Raymond Serrano sooner. And then Hitler lived in uh, Barcelona at the Parc du Citadella and at the uh, Montserrat Monastery. Um, and when things got hot in the tea rooms behind, um, they were just further up the hill. And that only had access, well, it's only had access recently by a funicular um, railway, like pulled up by a, a chain. Um, so uh, Hitler got identified by an um, um, Irish quartermaster general who was actually a priest at the time, uh, who met Hitler at about midnight one night um, on, on uh, New Year's Eve, um, News Day, 1949-1950. Um, and uh, went back to his, master, his uh, boss and said, um, oh, I've met the German gardener. He's taking care of his roses and he speaks perfect English. And it's Adolf Hitler. So the British didn't want that getting out. So they put um, uh, radioactive plates in his mattress and killed Hitler in February 1950. Alan Clark was born in February 1950 in, the, in an area called uh, Waikato, whose initials are WK. Um, uh, and the 202 would stand for the 20th of February, which is uh, when she's born, or the 20th or 26th, it's unsure dates. And then um, the uh, CIA ran this very strange program under health uh, from the uh, 1960s and, and uh, early to the early 1970s, where they were looking for uh, the reincarnation of World War II people. And that might sound really weird, but the CIA took their providential information from the Nazis, like anything the Nazis said and the CIA people repeated. Uh, that sounded strange, and they were questioned on it. They said, because the Nazis told me. And the Nazis had their spiritual base in Tibet, which they were getting their uh, esoteric knowledge from, and the Tibetans believe in reincarnation. So the Ivy League CIA believed in reincarnation as well. So it went right through. So they actually followed up on it. So they got Helen Clark, and then Helen Clark was sent to uh, Stockholm um, uh, to go to feminist lectures at Stockholm University. And from there, she was picked up and taken on a 95-minute flight across to St. Petersburg, uh, where she was trained in the Tavistock there. <coughs> Fascinating. Yeah, it is. And I got some information because I had lunch with the KGB in Moscow. And, and I, I got to talk to them because the Berlin Wall had been down a month and they weren't getting paid. So you could buy them a meal and have a chat with them and get Cold War secrets. So you, you've done a fair amount of traveling in the process of uh, developing your manuscripts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it hasn't all come just to New Zealand. Oh, no, no, no. Well, no, no, no. What happens is you, you go overseas and, you, you you know, you have some strange experiences and you do some strange stuff and you get some information and you come back here and you talk to a few people and then um, if you tell them stories that they haven't heard of and they check it out and it turns out to be true, then you've got a bit of an in. Very, very interesting. We, I wish we had longer to chat. I'm going to bring you back, I'm sure, Greg. Why don't you tell us kind of an overview of what your research has revealed that's important to citizens of the world today if they want to understand the world's history? Um, pretty much anything that a university professor tells you is bunk. Anything that an historian writes who's then given an elevation, like uh, Hugh Trevor Rope became... Um, Baron Dacra, therefore he's crap. He's written a false history. And um, it's the nuggety authors 